Welcome to our GCSE Psychology Revision video. Today we're looking at the Blackwell study and this is a study into growth and fixed mindsets and maths ability. So the background to this study is the previous research that Dweck has carried out into growth and fixed mindsets. So just as a very quick recap, a growth mindset is someone who believes they can continue to improve. They will always be looking for ways to improve. They won't be sort of limited and, and, held, and held back. And they will take any guidance or feedback as instructions for how to improve and they'll take that on board and they will be willing to have any feedback. A fixed mindset is a person who believes they are only as good as their own ability. And once they reach that potential, there's no point trying any, any harder or doing anything different because that is just what they're able to achieve. Any criticism or feedback that they're given will be taken very negatively and will be uh, taken as kind of an affront to their ability rather than as constructive and used to improve. So previous research found that those who believe their abilities weren't fixed were able to achieve higher. And we've seen this in lots of kind of sportsmen and uh, famous people who entrepreneurs who continue to work and continue to strive to get better because they believe they're not held back, they're not limited. There are two parts to this study and one, the first one has a look at whether growth or fixed mindset is a predictor of whether, um, oh, sorry, of mass ability. And the second one looks at interventions and has a look at whether interventions can improve maths ability. So the hypothesis for the first study is looking at the relationship between seventh grade students' theories of intelligence and their actual achievement on a maths test. Now, when we're talking about theories of intelligence, in this case, we're talking about do they have a growth or fixed mindset? That is their theory of what intelligence is. And this is a nurture based theory because we can change between a growth or a fixed mindset. And we find that people who have fixed mindsets, if we teach them about growth mindset, we can teach them to have a growth mindset. And that's where the nurture side of this theory comes in. It's not something you're born with, although if you're a fixed mindset, you might believe it is. But that doesn't make it a nature theory. We can change that and we can nurture you to have a growth mindset. This is a longitudinal study and it takes place over five years. And there are two visits to students over the course of the five years. Um, and it's what we call a correlational field study. So it's looking at relationships between variables. It's a field study because it takes place in school. Now, in terms of evaluation, that's a really important evaluation point because it means that the students are doing maths tests in a place where a maths test would be a normal thing to do. That gives it a lot of um, ecological validity because it is a real life situation for these children so we should be getting normal natural behavior the three variables we're looking at is the student's theory of intelligence so do they have a growth or a fixed mindset um, we will look at their achievement related beliefs so do they believe that um, a fixed mindset will limit you and a growth mindset will help you and then we will have a look at their maths achievement in the seventh and eighth grades the students were from uh, four seventh grade classes in a New York school. They were a mix of ethnic and socioeconomic statuses. So we do have a wide range of different sorts of cultures and backgrounds. And we do have a fairly even split of boys and girls. However, as this is just one area of New York, it doesn't even represent a good balance of people who live in New York. So we do have issues of generalizability, uh, as we can't say that this is like every other school that we would like to apply it to. So there's a few things these students were asked to complete during the study. The first one was a standardized maths test, and they did this while they were still at elementary school. And this was to show the baseline. Now, in all studies, we want to see improvement, don't we? And we want to see if things have improved because what we think they've had, they've improved by. In this case, we want to see improvements linked with the mindset, the intelligence theory that the children have. So it's really important to have that baseline measurement so we can show progress from that point. So then, um, as you would expect, children have had further maths tests, um, some in the autumn and some in the spring of the seventh and eighth grade. So we can really show progress over time. 
The other thing the students were asked to complete was this motivational questionnaire. Uh, there's some examples of the questions here. And this is a Likert scale going from one to six, going from strongly agree to strongly disagree. And they're asked all sorts of various different types of questions. So things um, to test whether they think they can change their intelligence. Uh, if they believe they can, then obviously that is a growth mindset. If they believe they can't, it's a fixed mindset. Uh, and then asking about the situations they find themselves in. An important reason why I do my schoolwork is because I like to learn new things. Um, the harder you work at something, the better you will be. And then it also gave them some situations. So in terms of the situation um, uh, that they might be asked to uh, give their opinion on. Uh, so it might say um, you start a new class at the beginning of the year. You really like the subject and the teacher. You think you know the subject pretty well. So you study a medium amount for the first quiz. Afterwards, you think you did OK, even though there were some questions you didn't know the answers for. Then the class gets their quizzes back and you find out you scored only at 54 and that's an F. Imagine you're in this scenario. How would you react? How would you justify your grade? Uh, and this is to get the children to think about how they would explain their own behaviour and how they would perhaps generate a growth mindset or a fixed mindset. Some important points to note about the procedure of the research. The students were given the right to withdraw. So um, in terms of ethical guidelines, they knew that they could uh, drop out of the study at any time and that would be OK. Their data would be withdrawn. The motivational questionnaire was completed at the start of the seventh grade. And that's so we can see what they're, um, what they're like at the start before we start the, the maths quizzes. Uh, the tasks were given by trained researchers with permission from the teacher. So it's important that students know that this is part of their schooling, that the teacher has given permission for this to happen. And it's also really important that the trained researchers are giving the questionnaires out and the tasks out to the students in the same way. That way there's no researcher bias and there's no bias in perhaps the way that the information is given to the children that gives one group an advantage over another. So it's just one other variable that we're able to control. The other way we've controlled uh, the variables is to keep the teachers the same in the seventh and eighth, eighth grade. So that ensures that there is consistency with teaching across those two year groups. And that won't be a variable in terms of how some children have improved in maths ability and some haven't. Now, the results for this study are really interesting. So in the first study, where we were just measuring growth mindset and measuring maths ability, there wasn't a correlation between the theory of mind and the math score at grade seven. However, what it does show is that having a growth mindset is a predictor for maths achievement later on. So therefore, the children with the growth mindset were predicted to achieve more and they did achieve more because of that growth mindset. Those with a fixed mindset showed less improvement. So to follow on from those results, Study two looked at what would happen if we taught students to have a growth mindset. So students who are taught to think intelligence is malleable, display more positive motivation in the classroom and achieve more highly than students who are not taught that intelligence is malleable. So what we're talking about here is if we teach children that intelligence is not fixed, if we teach them that they can improve their intelligence, and if we teach them how to have that growth mindset, how to take that constructive criticism, how to keep going, encourage them to keep going, then they should achieve more. So the second study carried out at the same school, um, still a correlational field study because we are still working with those students in the classroom. Independent measures design. Now, this is slightly different because we're not uh, looking for um, just relationships between two variables. We're going to have two groups and we're going to have an intervention group where we're going to teach them about growth mindset and what that is and a non-intervention group where we're just going to measure and see what happens if they don't have intervention. And that is just, again, to look for the difference between the two groups. The dependent variable in this case is the levels of motivation and the achievement on the maths assessments. Slightly smaller sample for this um, second study.
study as we need to sort of do an intervention. It's not just a case of measuring the children that are there. Same sort of mix, same um, mix of males and females. 91 students were used in the, um, the two groups. Uh, eight of the students dropped out from the initial enrolment. So the procedure for study two is very similar to procedure for study one at the start. The students completed the motivational questionnaire at the start of the seventh grade, and that gave the baseline measurement for the, the study. They were next to randomly assigned to two groups. Now, both groups were told they were going to take part in an eight week, in, wait, eight, eight week intervention. They weren't told what the intervention was going to be. And as far as they knew, they were doing the same as the other group. So group one were taught about learning theories and about growth mindset. Um, they were taught strategies to improve their mindset. They were taught um, different ways of learning that would improve their mindset. Group two were taught about how memory works. And they were still given some intervention, but it wasn't about growth mindset. It was just talking through different memory strategies. Throughout all this, there were 16 undergraduate students who were trained as mentors. Now, the ones that took part in the group one intervention were trained on how to deliver a growth mindset intervention. So they were trained to give that uh, relevant information to the students. At the end of the eight week course, both groups did a multiple choice on the content of the workshop where they answered questions about things that they had learnt. Three weeks later, they redid the motivational questionnaire again to see what progress they'd made over the three weeks. And the teacher who was teaching the maths was asked to report which students seemed more motivated. Now, the, the teacher who was doing the reporting didn't know there was any difference between the two workshops. And this was really important because, we, again, we don't want that bias coming through. If the teacher knew that one group were doing a motivational workshop on growth mindset, then they may be biased towards reporting them having a more positive attitude because they may be looking for them to have a more positive attitude, knowing that they were doing that sort of workshop. So it's really important that the teacher didn't know that and they could just report what they genuinely saw from those students. Again, the math results were recorded, so they went through 7th and 8th grade, and they had math tests in the autumn and the spring of both years. So this is where the results start to get really interesting. So the students who had that intervention group had changed their theory of mind significantly. They had a more positive mindset. They were choosing better interventions, the better ways of learning, better way of um, moving their progress on. 27% of the children in the intervention group were reported by the teachers having a more positive motivation. Now I'm surprised that's not a little higher actually. You would think that more of the children would go back to the maths class and implement what they have put, but maybe it just wasn't noticed by the teacher. Students in the intervention group gained significantly higher maths grades in those tests that they took part in compared with the control group. So there is definitely something happening here where those children who are taught about having a growth mindset are finding ways to move their own improvement on. So that's really clear in those results. So the conclusions that we can take from this study then is that if we can teach people about growth mindset, if we can highlight the limitations of a fixed mindset and we can talk them through effort-based strategies and positive strategies that will move their mindset forward, then we can have a big impact on their ability. And it's not necessarily just having the growth mindset that's important. We saw from that first study, for those children that had a growth mindset, they just kept going and kept improving. But if we've got someone with a fixed mindset that we can change to a growth mindset, then that seems to have a real positive improvement on their progress and seems to sort of move their progress forward rapidly. So it does support Dweck's ideas of growth and, and fixed mindset and how that can limit development or it can move development forward and how that growth mindset can have a positive impact on their achievement. So as we said, this is a nurture theory for our developmental section. It shows how the environment that children are brought up in can have an impact on how well they develop, particularly for things like IQ. So I hope you found that useful. 
Thank you very much. Goodbye.